What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. I apologize for not getting more videos out before Christmas. So really, I really do apologize. There's been a lot going on. I'm not no air rack. I don't have any extra videos on my computer that I could just upload for you guys. I've been super busy. We got a brand new store. I'm the new manager. Been closing it up. Been staying later just because of holidays. So if you guys know how it is to work in the retail business, you'll understand how busy I've been with trying to do YouTube as well and getting days off. So I think after the holidays will be a little bit better. But I do want to bring you guys in along for the ride. What we have sitting right behind me. I got two new products. If you guys didn't see my post. So this is a scooter over on this side, and then we have a bike on this one. This is from Food Care, and this is the Taurus e-bike, made in China. We like to see made in China, and it says do not drop. I think they dropped it when they dropped it off. Get, get it? <laughs> uh, and then we got an e-scooter right here. This one is from R Varla. I'm assuming that's what it is. It's almost sounding like Varla scooters, but this is R Varla, I'm assuming. I don't know, I'll have to look up a video and make sure I'm saying that right. This should be very easy to put together. I don't think we're gonna have any issues with this because normally scooters just lay flat. The handlebars go up, you put the locking pin in, maybe you have to put the display on and maybe like the thumb throttle or whatever. That's mostly it. This is gonna take a while and I wanna get this done as well tonight. It's been a long day. I'm probably gonna be up to like four in the morning, but I wanna knock these two out. So before I do that though, I gotta move this big old car. And then after we move this one and we get these put together, I wanna go show you guys a Tesla because I've been working on that thing like crazy. Well, just like I said, you just gotta pull this thing out, maybe put the handlebars on, which you need to put two screws right here it looks like and other than that it looks pretty good there's some grease on it i don't know where this grease came from you guys can see that but it's really greasy everything's gonna have to be moved around because this is way too low so everything's gonna have to be uh loosened up and tightened this is just way too high this is way too high as well so i got a lot of work to do ahead of me but it was pretty easy just to take it out of the box the only thing is it has a lot a foam all over that just stuck onto it from being in these boxes. You can see it's even in the charge port over here. So <laughs> we're gonna have to get like a blower or something like that. I do have an air compressor over there and I'll use. But other than that, um, let me just put these screws in and I'm gonna put it off to the side and start charging it. So then we can open this bad boy. Okay, so I couldn't get the scooter to turn on. So I had to pull it over here and get it on the charger. And I was finally able to get it activated because on this scooter, it has an NFC right here, which is this little thing that had oil on it that I showed you guys. And it uses these right here. So I was holding this on here. I was also holding the power button. And it just wasn't doing anything. And obviously you just know it just turned off. I don't know if that's a safety thing, but I wouldn't know if you come up here, hold this for three seconds and then it's supposed to come on, or if you're supposed to come over here first, use the NFC, and then it blinks like that, and then you hold this and it turns on. So that's what I was thinking, and it still wasn't doing it, so then I tried holding this actually on there and turning it on at the same time. I only have two hands, so I can't do it all at once, but I think it's just dead. I think they shipped it out and it was completely dead, so I can't even test it out right now. Hopefully at the end of this video I can ride it, but I'm just gonna get started on this thing for now while that one charges. I don't know how that footage came out, but it was long as heck. Compared to opening the scooter and putting it together, that probably took, I would say, a good one or two minutes. This thing has taken me so far about 30 minutes to put together, just taking it out of the box and getting everything off of it, getting the front tire on there, and just basically getting everything wrapped. The one thing that I didn't think was gonna have to be installed was this. This actually came completely uninstalled, which you would think that they would just do it already and put this screw in here and put this, because what is it gonna affect in the box? They just put the other fender on top of here, you know, put styrofoam, whatever they gotta put, and it should be good. 
The one thing that I need to put on now is I'm looking for this piece. So I'm hoping it's in that big old box over there because normally these are on and they're just like loose, but this isn't here and it's not on here either. But I just basically stopped it because there's just too much to do. So I'm just gonna finish this off camera then get the pedals on, make sure everything's good on it. And then we'll try to take either the scooter if it's charged or take this one for a spin. All right, so another 15 minutes later, the Foo Care bike is finally put together, or I should say Taurus electric bike is put together. It looks like the headlight works. And one cool thing about this bike before we even get into the review is every single time that you hit this or you hit the power, whatever, it vibrates. It actually sends a vibration to the bike. And I think it's coming from this throttle right here because I've never experienced anything like that. It's not vibrating the rest of the bike. It's pretty cool. But another thing I noticed, I was like, wait, where's the brake light at? And there is one light and it's on this side. And that might seem like, hey, that's cool. It's integrated into the frame. But if you live in America and you're driving, you have to be on the right hand side of the road, which means cars are going to be on this side of you. The brake light should have been on this side for us instead of this side. So that's a huge safety thing. Um, so I think I'm going to have to put a shred light R1 for my skateboard on this bike just to be extra safe because I'm not a big fan the brake light being way on that other side. Anyways, this one's done. Probably gonna go take it for a spin really quick. I'll just bring you along with the camera. Why not? Let's go. I highly don't advise anyone do what I do. I have no helmet. I got one hand on and I have to push the brakes and <laughs> this is sketchy as heck. I have the pedals activated too, so I gotta be careful on that and it not taking off on me. Now the bike's not very twitchy or twerky or anything like that, it doesn't seem like, but it does have decent power but it does feel very weird and it wants to take off from me because I only have one hand on the bike. So I think we're gonna leave it at that. It looks like it's a 28 mile per hour bike. It looks like it slowed down, um, it, like it topped out. But again, I'm not trying to go that fast. Do not be like me. I just wanna make sure these things are working so we can get them charged and then we can hit the review. Oh, make sure we don't hit the Tesla. Hold on, hold on, oh God. <laughs> All right, so we know this works. Now let's uh, see if the scooter over here is somewhat charged so we can just go take it for a spin. I don't think I'm gonna be able to take you with a camera on that one though, unfortunately, because I just have a feeling that I need two hands for scooters. Scooters are not safe to use one-handed, but uh, let's uh, see if I can take it out real quick. I hope everything is tight. And since it's all wheel drive, you can't just spin the wheel to make sure it works and it needs a push start for it to move. So I'm gonna take it out. So I'll be back guys. If you guys can even see me, the GoPro is super wide, be back. Okay, so I rode it maybe five seconds and in number three or five, it was only going about 10 or 15 miles an hour and it did not have any power. So I'm assuming we need to unlock it somehow. I know it's probably charging too. Uh, I don't know where the battery's at. I got it looked up with the manual. The manual is funny enough, is actually in this box. So it's not a standard manual. Everyone says, make sure you read the manual. You gotta scan this thing with your phone, it takes you to a website and it doesn't even tell you anything about how to use the NFC on it. And I'm not watching the YouTube videos. Obviously I'm just trying to do this stuff myself. When I don't figure stuff out, most of the time I see if someone else did a review on it first before I did, but uh, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. So I'm gonna see if there's a way to unlock it while scanning that again and checking out the website and uh, see if it goes any faster. But so far, nice and smooth, I guess. Okay, I should have known, ladies and gentlemen, there is an actual app that you need to download first. And then once you do that, it connects the Bluetooth to the scooter and then it allows you to do your settings. And oh man, what'd you know? I gotta register. Oh man, I hate when you gotta register for this type of stuff. All right, so Bluetooth is searching on here and it's also blinking right there in the corner. And so far, nothing is coming up. Okay, so finally got it figured out. What you had to do is get rid of the app, basically force close it, whatever you got to do on your iPhone or Android, whatever you're using, and then bring it back up and then it will find your scooter and I turn it back on and off. The bad thing is, is uh, I don't think it's charged enough. It says it's at like 50 volts. It's a 52 volt scooter, if I'm not mistaken. And it doesn't seem like it has that much power though. Um, I was only in single motor, then I realized that D right there means that we're in dual motor. So if you hold the menu button up here, you're gonna see that change to S and that means single motor. I thought that meant sport. 
So you just kind of learn as we're going along. The manual is not that great. Um, the scooter quality looks decent. Um, there are some like stuff I've seen here and there, but I wanted to have more power because right now it doesn't feel anything like the Varla scooter that I rode, but I do love all these lights. Now it is representing the company and you're basically just flashing free advertisement with them as you're rolling around, but it's actually at a pretty good price point. I think it's like 15 or 1600 bucks. And then this thing, I think is around the same price, if I'm not mistaken, maybe even cheaper. But uh, this is a cool looking frame, I think, on this electric bike. And it has a huge battery as well in there. It's not a mid-drive or anything like that. It looks like it is. It has an actual regular motor in the back. But this is looking cool. But now what I got to do before I show you guys the Tesla and we go check that out with everything I've been doing, I got to clean this shit up. It's probably going to take like... 20 to 30 minutes, man. I got to figure out what I'm going to do with all this stuff first. Make sure I organize everything, get the bikes put away with the chargers next to them so we get them charged for the next time we do a review. And then hopefully after this video, I'll get started on that Rave GTX bike. But it rained the last time I was actually going to do the video on promise. I'm, I'm not kidding you. I had two days off. I was going to shoot the Tesla video right before Christmas. And then I was going to do the GTX one. I was either going to do either or. I wasn't exactly sure. But it rained both of those two days that I had off and I went right back to work, Christmas, everything is just hectic as hell. I was the last one to leave the store, I had the keys of the store in my backpack right now because I was literally the last one to leave and I was like an hour and a half overtime just trying to clean up the store. But anyways, uh, yeah, let me get started on this. I'm so excited. 15 minutes later. All right, now it's time we gotta jump in the Tesla. You are gonna be excited and all the stuff we've been doing with this thing. So we're now sitting in the Tesla. I went to a charging location cause I took this car to my sister's house and I was giving her a ride and stuff so she could check it out. Cause she hadn't seen my car since I bought it about three months ago. But yeah, we're just sitting at a charging station with everybody else and we got this uh, jackass over here in a Camaro that's taken up two of the installs, which is great. But anyways, oh yeah, you guys can see the location of where I'm at right now. So this is where I normally charge my vehicle super late at night. Uh, I normally go up to about 90% or maybe 95% and then I have a home charger. I just, I just try not to charge all of it at the house. But anyways, I wanted to get into the lights of this vehicle and you can see we got some cool LEDs on the bottom. So these lights were actually supposed to be one up here, which there is, and then one on the bottom way down here, if you guys can see that. Now the one that's underneath the seat is actually supposed to go in the back back here. So if you notice, I have no LEDs back here whatsoever, but no one's ever gonna be in the back seat. So I figured why not put both of them firing up front? So it just makes it look cooler, right? And they're like a hundred bucks to get those floor lights from Abstract Ocean. I like them. The only thing I don't like about them is it uses this remote. And this remote, basically, you have to point it to every single sensor to the light to get it to change. It's not like, oh, you hit one button and it changes all of them all together. So this is kind of a huge inconvenience. And also, this is like low quality type of kits when you get remotes like this. So I don't know. It's not too bad for 100 bucks, though, honestly. And it was very simple to do. Once I put the light in here, I ran the cable to the corner. We just basically tucked it all underneath the plastic. And then right at this corner right here, we just basically just came right under the seat and we were perfectly fine. And it literally took me maybe less than like 45 minutes to do the whole setup on the floor. Now, the other lights you might be noticing are the ones that we have on the dash that are changing cool ass colors. You could change these to anything you want. And what I like about these, you can use your phone and on your phone, you can do so many different like stuff that you want to do. Like it's, it's ridiculous on how many settings you have. And then I have this one down here for the phone chargers, which I never use my phone charger because I got a swivel mount for this screen right here. And what happens with that is it actually dropped it an inch. Um, but anyways, before I start talking to that, um, these lights that are on here as well are from the same company. And I love how these look. So I was debating on if I was gonna have these go all the way back or if I was gonna start them right here and then have both of them line up to this like edge right here. But I think it's kind of cool. It just, people get surprised when I lift this up and they see that they actually keep going, which is pretty dope. And then we also have the ones up here as well but I don't have this one. Um, this one, because of Christmas and everything, it kind of got delayed, but um, there was a short on one of them and it was probably my fault, but I'm pretty sure it said that the LEDs were like really strong. So I pushed it in there as best as I could and I guess I shorted something out, I don't know. But those are all from EV Base. That's actually my first sponsor for making Tesla videos is the LEDs that you see up on the dash, the ones right here in the center console, and then the ones up here. 
and they look so great. Let me go through the, some of the settings and show you. So I want to show you guys the app that uses all these lights. And it's funny is this is all my e-bike stuff. So you can see that I have the Bigode app right there. That's for the K6 because I heard the K6 now goes up to 120 kilometers per hour. That little sit down scooter. God! can't say I'm not nervous for this one. So that's going to be fun. So I downloaded that again. I actually don't need this. I don't know why it's there. But anyways, this one right here, Magic Lantern, uh, you hit that. This is where it gets crazy. You can just move it around if you want. You can see that everything's changing based on, you know, like what I moved the scroll wheel to. Like it's pretty sick. But you can also come in and do your custom colors as what well if you want. I don't know. Like blue is like probably the best because that matches everything in my car. I really like uh, the red for some reason. The red is just very bright. But the cool thing about this, all the styles. So this is the autoplay feature right here. If you guys want to see that if it's uh coming out good this is a very wide gopro it's really good for riding bikes but it's really hard to uh film with this in the car but you definitely see all the stuff you can do and it's not even that i mean there are so many like transitions you can do like it's just never ending like it does so many cool things and it just i don't know i can't ever figure out what i want to keep it on so i normally just change it like almost every day but i think some of my favorite ones are the trail ones and i go to where is it at the blue trail i normally leave it on this because to me this just looks kind of like stylish and unique and a lot of people are like oh that's cool every time i go and get fast food late at night but just know that company is ev base and i have a coupon code for their website and it's mr central driver the same as my youtube channel so you can go over there i, be, I think you save like 10 or 15 percent so if you guys own a tesla or even if you guys don't own a tesla this is a crazy thing it uses cigarette lighter so if you want to order say the dash light that one hooks up to usb or you get it with a cigarette lighter and all they are is like little thin pieces of plastic with i want to say a, a back backing that's barely like very like thin it's like I don't know, half the size of my nail. And basically with a little bit of 3M tape that you put on there yourself and it sticks to anything and it won't ruin your interior at all. So if you're thinking about getting some LEDs just for your car, it actually would work for anything really if you have a USB port or a cigarette lighter. And once we're done with this charge, which won't take long, we will uh, show you guys the outside of the car and stuff that I've been doing. All right, so let's step out of the vehicle and let me show you what I've done to it. So first off, you guys can see the LEDs in the car and how bright they are just looking at it from the outside so people that see this when i open the door are like damn that thing is fresh right and that steering wheel too just looks badass i wish there was some light up leds right here because once you get the carbon fiber covers on this steering wheel you lose the up and down arrows which we already know what they are when you're a tesla owner but i would like to see some leds on the steering wheel that'd be kind of cool i don't know maybe it's ricey i don't know Anyways, uh, I got these put on. There's blue LEDs for the floodlights or whatever you want to call the door lights that go to the ground on every single door. I also got these two. I don't really know what these are called either. They're basically just a door lock cover. I don't know, like a latch cover. And then the biggest thing you guys are going to notice are going to be the wheels. I went with a staggered setup. These are 21 inch wheels. They're 20 by nine and a half in the front and then 20 by 10 and a half in the rear and these are 275 35s in the back and then in the front they're 255 35s and i feel like it looks great i also put these little spinning things on here they're like floating center caps but when you're moving over 20 miles an hour the t stays upright at every single time but to show you the lights i have to spin them this way oh and you can hear my custom lock sound on this car it sounds like something getting armed like a bomb and that's one of the new updates they did it wasn't a recall I mean, they did make it a little bit more nagging for autopilot, but that's basically what the recall was. It was just an update, but they gave us some more cool features. We also gained an extra camera on this car too, because before you'd only be able to face this way and out that way. Now you can face like in the corner, which is pretty cool. Anyways, uh, back here, I tinted this. So this was the charge port door. I'm not going to try to open it, but this was a red reflector. I tinted that to match up to the tail lights that I did to this car, which are from Alpha Rex. These are some cool badass tail lights i love them we also got the blacked out emblem back here i got the stock spoiler i do want to change it out and get something a little bit like wider and i got the digital plate as well that has a youtube name on there and then the reflectors on the bottom i also uh tinted those as well so those kind of blend into the whole back of the car looking kind of dark i think it looks great uh the mud flaps in the back are gonna have to go though because when i do lower this car which i do have lowering suspension for it um it's already hitting right now and the car's not even low this is a performance model so it does it a little bit lower than the standard one but still it's scraping man it's bad and then if you guys can see the door handles they kind of give a little bit of reflectiveness to them it's because i got some uh 
real carbon fiber door handles on there. And then we also have carbon fiber mirrors on this thing as well. They just slip over. They're not actual, the whole mirror. They just basically just covers that slip on there. And then we got carbon fiber hardware for cameras for the fender right there. And those are sick. Those are super like cheap. I think they're like 99 bucks, but I love them. They're, they're great. And then up here, um, I didn't do anything to the headlights. I do have a blacked out emblem right there, but that's causing some issues. And then we got the turn signal fog lights. These are sequential turn signal fog lights. They look sick. This is probably one of my favorite mods on this car so far other than the rims, but it just looks so great. And I love that I put that yellow little fog light cover on there. So it kind of reminds me of a JDM look, um, but I'm loving it so far. I just need to change out these headlights. I want to go to a four projector headlight, or I think it's four or five, and it's a blacked out housing as well, but you do lose the daytime running light i guess i don't really care too much about it i'm really trying to black out everything on this car and i should have tinted the front windshield just a little tiny bit more i think because it's not that great but overall guys the car is coming along the lowering suspension is in my garage it's ready to go and it just looks fantastic man i i love it so far um i got the covers on the wheels as well these are like little oh god okay i guess they come off easier than i thought but Basically, uh, these just pop over your lug caps, so uh, please don't try to steal those. <laughs> they uh, basically just pop over your lug nuts is what I meant to say, and they're just little caps. Um, they're cool though. And then from the car, you can see all the stuff like running. Looks pretty sick. And then when you open the car and get in it, it does a little cool animation. The reason why this one kind of stays running longer because it's off the cigarette lighter. Let me turn that music down. And then this one is hooked up to the glove box where the the hard drive and the security camera stuff is so it's hooked up a different way than what this is and also the top but anyways that's pretty much it guys it has been a super super long day and i'm pretty sure this video has been a mess because i didn't really have a plan for it normally like i kind of had a plan for like my youtube videos and whatnot and today was just like I need to get these bikes and scooters put together. I gotta leave my family a little bit early and get this done, charge this car so I can take it to work the next day and basically just get this video done tonight. So right after I'm done with this, it's going up the very next day so you guys can see it on the 26th. And I hope you guys are doing well. I don't have any videos in the bank ready to go. I'm not air rack again. I'm not doing those 30 day challenges. I'm very far behind on my YouTube, but hopefully after the holidays, I'll catch up. And you guys are the true MVPs for sticking around to the end. Again, sorry it was all over the place. I really apologize, but I, I really appreciate you guys being here. And uh, can you guys even see me? Because it is dark as heck in here. <laughs> but love you guys. True MVPs again. Peace out.